Blessings and peace to you. I'm Reverend Saeed Richardson, Program and Operations Officer for the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference and Senior Pastor and Lead Pastor of the First Baptist Church of Waukegan and the New City Manor Project here in Illinois. I am honored to say that both the Poor People's Campaign and the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference are privileged to co-convene and to launch this week an interfaith prophetic witness and powerful prayer action for just democracy. The vision of this work is unforgettably written in the words of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 58, 1. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. The vision is understood in the words and the sounds of Ella's song. We who believe in freedom shall not rest until it comes. Our only direction is toward the mark of justice. As the truth and light upon this nation reveals its underbelly of injustice, we stand on the promises of God that the prayers of the righteous do availeth much. All across this nation, in all of its diversity, in all of our states, those who believe in democracy are casting votes for justice. Lights of love are being lit and the sounds of the spirit are being heard. Prayers of peace are transcending and voices of victory are in the air. And in the midst of multiple and intersecting pandemics, the pandemic of racism, the pandemic of impoverishment, COVID-19 pandemic, and the pandemic of police violence, as well as threats against the pillars of our democracy by a false moral narrative of religious nationalism and fictional faith fascism, all over this nation, people of goodwill are joining this more prophetic vote. It's my pleasure today to introduce a reflection offered by Reverend William G. Sinkford, Senior Minister of First Unitarian in Portland, Oregon, followed by a prayer from Rabbi Alana Suskin from the Maryland Poor People's Campaign. And then we will close with our sound for justice. As we continue the march, the march of souls to the poles, may the reign of an unsurmountable spiritual power Manifest God's will for justice and righteousness upon this land. And may the vision of love and light and truth and the testimony of God's power, may they all defeat everything that is wicked in this land. And may all that is sacred in God's presence rest, rule, and abide in this prophetic call to witness. Amen. I'm Reverend Bill Sinkford. I serve the First Unitarian Church in Portland, Oregon, and I'm honored to offer a reflection and invite a moment of prayer. There's clearly a lot at stake in this election. So many important, specific questions are on the table. But I believe that one of the most important questions for all of us is whether we will choose to live in hope or whether we will choose to live in fear. It is remarkable how much energy has been wasted and how many resources have been spent telling groups of people that they cannot vote. The founders of this nation took great pains to limit who could vote, just white men with property in the beginning. They feared empowering the rest of us. They did not trust the rest of us. Think of the effort it took for women to get the vote, white women, just to be clear, but it took decades of protest and organizing because voting by women was feared. We're still fighting for black, indigenous, and people of color to matter and to be able to vote without overcoming barriers. Former incarcerated folks, there's still barriers for them. And poor and low wealth Americans, why do you think the official in-person data vote is still Tuesday? in the middle of the work week. So much energy, so much energy has gone into building and maintaining barriers to the vote. We have been taught to fear our neighbors and our neighbors have been taught to fear us. Just think, if all that energy had gone into building the beloved community, just imagine how we might be living today and how we might with honesty, be able to promise our children, all of our children, that we are leaving them a world where they can be safe, a world in which it's reasonable for them to have hope. Fear. 
Fear has kept so many of us from voting for so long. Fear has kept us from realizing how much hope there can be in those simple words, we the people. Let's take those words seriously. Let's take those words literally and mean each of us and all of us. Let us claim an embracing and an inclusive hope that can hold us all, a hope that we can build together. Will you pray with me? Spirit of life and of love, whom we call by many names and no name at all, God of our hearts, God of our hopes, be with us today. There is much to grieve, all the deaths from the virus, so many endings. But end times are always also times of beginning. The new creation is always waiting to be revealed. May we find the courage and the strength of heart to live through the coming days, holding a vision big enough to be worthy of our commitment and hopeful enough to be worthy of our love. May we close out the political din as it rises to its crescendo and the lies which seem to never cease. There is little to be learned and few minds to be changed. May we discover space in our spirit, space to hear love's call, even amidst the din. May we remember our real need for a working tomorrow, a tomorrow that works for all of us and not against us. And may we remember the need to begin moving forward together, to begin moving forward together, even if this will be the first time that we can say, we the people, and mean not some of us, but all of us. May that be so, and amen. I'm Rabbi Alana Suskin. Nefesh kol chai, ruach kol basar. Two names for God, the breath of all that lives, the breathing of all flesh. Beloved creator, it is so hard to breathe right now. So many cried out to you, I can't breathe, because a foot was on their neck, because the owner of that foot did not see them as human, and so their nefesh, their soul that you breathed into them, was strangled out of them. Nishmat kol chai, the breath of all life, yet another name for the God who breathes our soul into us. Nefesh, ruach, neshama, all three are names for soul and also for breath. So many more who cannot breathe, whose souls are strangled as this pandemic ravages our brothers and sisters here and throughout the world. More than 228,000 Americans have died from COVID-19 since March. But even before this pandemic began, we were already weary of the death toll. Nearly 700 people a day were dying of poverty. An increasing number of Americans, more than 140 million, are poor and low income. 133 million Americans with pre-existing conditions teeter on the edge of losing health insurance. Over 1 million voters were denied their right to vote because of systemic racism in 2016. And as of today, the Senate has failed to renew the Voting Rights Act for 2,688 days. Three times every day, the Jewish people cry out to you, O oh God, Hashiva shoftenu kivarishona. Restore our judges as they were before and our counselors as they used to be. Remove from us sorrow and sighing. God of all breath, let us breathe easy. You alone, beloved, reign over us with kindness and compassion, with righteousness and justice. Blessed are you, God, the ruler who loves righteousness and justice. 
And on this Tuesday, November 3rd, as the Jewish community does every Tuesday, we recite the 82nd Psalm, a Psalm of Asaph. God stands in the divine assembly. Among the judges, God delivers justice. How long will you all judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Selah. Do justice to the weak and the orphaned. Vindicate the lowly and the poor. Rescue the poor and the destitute. Save them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They go about in darkness while all the earth's foundations shake. I had said you are like God, sons of the Most High, all of you. But you shall die like any human, fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall possess all the nations. And now let us pray for the fair establishment of a just government. El Elohei Haruchot Lechol Basar, God who is the spirit of all flesh. Ten lana lahakim memshelet shalom ubriyut, tzedek v'chavod lechol chai. Hen b'nei b'ritenu, hen b'nei tevel, b'chol makom shehem. May we establish a government of peace and health, justice and respect for all who live neighbors and distant, wherever they might be. God, remind us of the words of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, not to despair. Remind us, If it's possible to destroy, believe that you are also able to repair. And let us go together today, every one of us, to begin that repair by voting. Hello. My name is Mundell Smalley. I'm a sophomore at American Baptist College, and I ring the bell for a just democracy. I sound the clarion for a just democracy that ensures all citizens the right to vote without harassment or intimidation. We offer a call to prayer for a just democracy for each person across the races, ethnicities, religions, gender, and sexual orientations. We ring a bell for a just democracy that eradicates racist voter suppression laws and lifts up people, including everyone, of the millions of disenfranchised voters. We ring a bell for a just democracy that respects all workers and knows each of the 2,700,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. We lift a voice and chant for a just democracy that fights poverty and not the 140 million poverty and low income citizens. We sound the clarion for a just democracy that ensures healthcare for all, including the 133 million Americans with pre existing conditions. We ring the bell for each earth, including the sacred lands and the First Nations and indigenous beloved in peril now, as well as the waters and the airs for our children to live. We ring our bells to remember at our core who we are and who this country may yet be. We ring our bells with clarity of conscious and sacred duty sounding in our very souls for those within this country and well beyond, recognizing our responsibility and impact across the world. We represent American Baptist College and we ring the bell.